You're listening to The Power Project. I'm your host, Brandy Voth, and it's my goal each week to inspire and empower you to go out and live purpose-filled lives and own your God-given power. On this show, I love spotlighting women that are doing just that. Occasionally, we bring in some purposeful business coaching for you, and then weeks like this, you are lucky enough to see the beautiful marriage of both of those passions of mine. My guest today is a professional storyteller that has made a living out of her hobbies as a child and goes on to coach business teams all over the world to learn how to tell stories. And while she'll never win the bake sale at her kid's school, she's always a welcome guest reader in their classroom. You guys, you are going to love everything that Kendra has to share with you today. Welcome back to The Power Project. I have a super fun guest on for you guys today. I first was introduced to my guest at convention, at my company's convention a couple of years ago, and her energy was just infectious. I loved everything about what she was sharing with the audience and she was so bubbly. To be completely honest, she really reminded me of my best friend that is a cute little bubbly blonde. And maybe that's why I was drawn to her. So Kendra is a speaker, but not only is she a speaker, she's an award-winning storyteller. She's been published at entrepreneur.com as a weekly columnist at Inc. Magazine and as a contributing editor to Success Magazine. She speaks for and works with brands of all sizes to help them harness the power of storytelling. Offstage, she lives in New York City with her husband and her son and daughter. She's an avid soul cycle writer, get it girl, Mm -hmm. and prefers the window seat on airplanes and always drinks her coffee cold. So you guys say hi to my guest. Hey, Kendra, how are you? Hi, Brandy. I'm so good. It's so good to be here with you. I'm so excited to chat with you today. Seriously, the first time that I saw you, I was like, this chick is like my best friend, Amanda. Like (laughs) just (laughs) the energy you bring to a room is so fun. I love it. Um, And that was a good day. I remember we met outside of the session, didn't we? Yeah, but you know what? That was the second time. Like I saw you at the first convention that you spoke at. Oh, that was a good one too. That was a great one. That was a really great one. And then, yeah, I had the opportunity to meet you at the second one because I had told so many people they needed to hear, hear what you had to say, because as as we're going to dig into your story, I'm going to let you let everyone know, you know, really what it is that you do and how you got started. But my takeaway was I've always told everyone like tell, but stories sell. And you literally have basically you've built a career out of storytelling. <laughs> it's true. I know, which when you when you say it like that, it it's still kind of still kind of shocking, but exciting and and um important. Isn't it funny like were you the kid that was ever told like, "Oh, that sounds like a story?" <laughs> yeah, you know, I think um I think I I definitely think that I've been a storyteller from from the start and um but even at a even at a young age, I, I focused. On, I cannot tell a lie. Um, I am not a good liar. But so so my stories, even at a young age, and definitely now, have always been true. Now they are they are detailed and they are expansive, but they're always true. I love that, and I think it's so funny. I just a side note. I have a, I have a son that is a storyteller. And that was kind of part of what I was going to ask you. Like, do you think that people are just tellings built into people? I do realize it's a craft that can be honed, but do you think that some people are just like genuine storytellers from day one? Like, where does that come from? Yeah. I mean, I think that, I mean, if you trace back, um, you know, without, without getting too deep into it, but, but when you trace back all the way to our beginning, this is how we were, able to organize ourselves as communities. This is how traditions and lessons and um, things to be careful of and things to do more of were passed, were passed down. And even then into more modern times, like it's, it's stories at bedtime when we're children. And so I think that stories, I know that stories are part of how we as humans communicate. I think what's interesting though is over time as we get older and then certainly as um, 
as our, it feels like time continues to speed up. And now with the introduction of social media and, and this, this thought in adulthood that, that we need to get to the point and not tell the story because we just need to, we need to get the information out. Um, I feel like we edit out our, our natural storyteller ness about each one of us. And for some of us that happens um, more quickly. So if you, I mean, obviously, if you're going into um, careers that involve creativity, if you're in marketing, if you're in sales, you may be more inclined to hold on to some of the storytelling that is a natural part of us. But if you move into more linear thinking, um, and even leadership executive levels, there, there's a the tendency to edit that out. So and that's where I think, yeah, the great, that's the great tragedy, right? Because, because ultimately, no matter who you are, no matter what your role is, no matter, no matter any of it, we are all still people. And therefore, we are all still impacted and connected by stories. Right. Yeah. And that, you know, that brings me to a question I was going to ask you. So this morning, I noticed on your Instagram stories, you had a much better start to the day than yesterday morning. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. (laughs) Yeah. So I, so, and that's, I think that people miss the mark when they're utilizing like Instagram stories are Instagram stories. Right. And so I think people get so confused with not knowing exactly how to, whether they're an influencer or a, a business owner or their marketing, whatever they're utilizing Instagram stories for, I think that they miss the mark on really sharing the story behind what it is that you're doing. And you're doing a phenomenal job. I know that you've had companies call you in to teach them how to do that. So can you just speak to a little about like sharing the story on social media? Yeah, I think that, so one of the beautiful things about social media, I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of downside to social media. I think we can all feel it. It makes us, there's, there's the dark side, right? Where you're comparing yourself to others or to, you know, others highlight reels. But one of the really beautiful things about social media is it gives us, each of us, any of us, whether you consider yourself an influencer or not, whether you are an influencer or not, it gives each of us a place to put our stories um, and and a place for people to read them or watch them or or hear them. So I think there I think that that's the first step in using social media. Um, is to recognize that this is a place where stories should be shared. And going back to what we were just talking about, humans want to hear stories. So it's the marrying of these these two perfect things, the, these two perfect forces. Humans wanting to hearing wanting to hear stories, and then having the the platform, the the medium, the opportunity to do so. But where we do miss the mark, right, is um, there's a tendency to to kind of talk around the story or to to mention the story but not necessarily tell it. So the what you're what you just mentioned here today is a post that um, I put up yesterday, which which lives static on my Instagram grid, right? So it's one of those pictures that if you click on it, the caption will always be there. It was a caption to one of my pictures, and I tell the story of my morning yesterday and. Um, and how awful it really was. But I didn't just say we had a really bad morning. Um, I went into the details of it. I said that my husband and I were having a heated discussion about a website. Um, I mentioned that then the conversations that morning, de- you know, descended to an argument with my son about his track pants that he wanted to wear to school. And then descended further with my daughter and having another instance of her tying her shoes and the whole morning ended in the silent treatment for some and (laughs) two of us were fuming one of us was bawling um and and the story went from there and the key to that and the the comments and the responses many there were many of them and I think there's two things at play here number one is really in the art of the story and how you craft a story and this is where people can go wrong I went into the details right I'm sure even if as I mentioned that there you have kids I don't know if they're um at the shoe tying age, but any parent who has had children um, who have to learn how to tie their shoes, they know how aggravating this is. It is, it is a real, it's a real <laughs> detail about daily operation of, of hashtag parent life, if you will. Um, so I got really specific about that. And in doing that, 
anyone who's reading it who has had that experience can directly relate. And they put themselves right there in their own living room or right outside their front door or wherever it is that they have that shoe tying conversation. And it just makes it that much more real. So that's a key when you're when you're crafting your stories and putting them on social media is is to really tell them to to share those details so people can connect to them. And then the second element of it is to use it as an opportunity to to be real. Like this is that was a real moment, that was a real story and um I think one of the beautiful things about storytelling is that it helps people feel normal. You know, like I'm sure there's so many parents who have had those mornings and you just feel like you're failing. It feels really good to hear that other parents are going through the same thing. And so to have the courage and the bravery to, to share that story that's of your not so perfect life um, really brings people together and, and helps other people, brings um, support and, and comfort to other people's lives. Whew, I had a lot to say about that, Brandy. <laughs> No, no, I love that. And I think that that is so important because, you know, we've, we've seen the evolution of social media, which is like the wild west. We're all just kind of learning as it happens. And it was like, we were all thrilled to have Facebook and we were like, or no, I'm sorry. We were all thrilled to have MySpace. Oh, yeah. And it was like, oh, yay, we're going to connect with our friends. And then we moved into the world of Facebook and it was a little different. And, you know, we shared just our lives and, and food that we cooked and things like that. And then it's like Instagram all of a sudden was the pressure to have the pretty look. And so I think the shift that I personally see in social media right now is people are begging for authenticity, but not like, you know, Hey, guess what? Just one person had one picture of viral stretch marks. And now everyone's like, here's a picture of my stretch marks, but it's not that it's the story of who you are and authentically owning your own story and crafting your own story. And so I think that's important just in life that people want to hear who you are, what you have going on, but where does that intertwine with business? Like why does it matter in business that you are crafting your story that you're authentically sharing and that you're showing up in maybe not always the best version of yourself, but the truest version. Yeah, I think that, so the, the reality is, and, and, you know, it depends on the kind of business that you're in, but, but there is a baseline that people want to do business with other people. Um, they, the people that have flaws, people that have successes, people um, that they can relate to. And, and stories give you when you're when you're in business um, a really great and controlled environment to share pieces of yourself, if, especially if you're building a personal brand that people can connect to. That is beyond the features and benefits of the product you offer or the mission statement of the company that you're a part of, um, or any of the other business jargon that we don't even realize is jargon um, at the longer that we're in the work that we do. So, I mean, that's, that's, so whether you are running your own personal brand and building your business that way, or whether you work within the walls of a company and you're, um, building your brand there with your with your team with with stakeholders you know with other you know maybe you're higher up so you can uh, get promotions and move to the next level in your career um, stories to illustrate the value of what you bring to the table of the initiatives that you feel strongly about um, they're all really important places to enhance what you're already communicate what you're trying to communicate so you have so many great um, takeaways and tangible steps for incorporating stories into business. And you have a new book out that we are going to jump into in just a bit. But I feel like we just jumped straight into like the nitty gritty guts of the interview, which I love because I'm excited to have it all out here. How did you get involved in this? How did you become 
the the storytelling <laughs> expert. That funny. Um, well, I told my first story that I can remember, like the first formal story when I was in fifth grade. It was an assignment for my English class, and we had to learn a children's book. And then I think we were we were just supposed to read it to um, another classroom. So it was you know kind of an uh, first foray into public speaking, which I think is important in education. And I'm always thrilled when teachers include that for my kids and their education because public speaking is important no matter what your future goals are you should be able to communicate so that was my first experience uh telling a story and I remember standing in front of that third grade classroom and and within the first few sentences like they were a room of like you know 25 30 third graders were like right there like they were at my feet and hanging on every word and in fact then So that was in fifth grade, and then I was in middle school, and then went through high school where I was on the speech team, and I competed on the speech team telling stories. Uh, But then my elementary school actually invited me back while I was in high school to come and teach storytelling at the elementary school. So then I had like a whole cafeteria full of second graders that I was telling stories for. And it started out that way. It was more fairy tales and folk tales. I told stories at my church. Um, but then when I was in high school, I'm taking you way back here. Um, I, uh, <laughs> I was actually, this was a, this was, I was trying to rebel against my mother, if you will. I don't know if you ever rebelled against your mother in high school. We all do it. <laughs> we all do it in different ways. But my mom wanted me to be filling out scholarship applications because the only way that I was going to be able to go to college is if I got some pretty healthy scholarships. So she was all over me to fill out these scholarship applications and I really didn't want to. Um, So to rebel, you know, again, we all do it in different ways. I instead applied to a storytelling competition. I know, huge rebel, (laughs) (laughs) who will alert the authorities. Um, But that was really it. That moment of rebellion was really the beginning of the next phase for me because I ended up going to the storytelling competition. You had to submit a a VHS tape. Um, I ended up winning the competition in my category, which then allowed me to go to the National Storytelling Festival, which, yes, they have those, um, which was in (laughs) Jonesboro, Tennessee. And it was at that festival, though, that I saw, um, and it was all about storytelling. It wasn't storytelling in business. It was just people sharing their life stories. And I saw these master storytellers stand on stages in front of hundreds of people and take these very small moments in their life and, and tell the story in such a way to, to make these moments really matter. And, and I remember just sitting there totally captivated and at the same time thinking, wait a minute, this is the same thing that happened to me when I was in fifth grade and I told those stories to third graders. Now, of course, I didn't, I, I wanted to go into business. And at the time, uh, storytellers really were, your career as a storyteller was to go back and tell you know, as an adult storyteller was to tell at festivals, yes, or tell um, in libraries or back at schools. And that wasn't really the plan that I, that isn't what I saw for my life. So I went to get my master's degree, um, which was in organizational uh, communication and management. My thesis was on storytelling in organizational culture. I then went to become a director of marketing and then VP of sales, But at the same time, I was still using stories to illustrate the value of the products that we were offering. I was using stories to motivate the sales force. Like stories were still a big part of what I was doing. And then on the side, I started working with some thought leaders and helping them with their stories and nonprofit organizations and helping them with their stories. And that's when I started to realize maybe what I need to be doing is I couldn't believe, Brandy, I couldn't believe that people were missing this. I couldn't, this is something that, again, now I'd been doing for decades and seeing the power of story. And I couldn't believe that not everybody knew this, that not everybody knew that the default should be the story and then fill the information in afterwards. So then I started working on how can I teach people 
what I've known how to do and what I've recognized as being so important my whole life. Um, and that's really when that's really when things, my career shifted. I left my sales job and just really focused on sharing this message of the power of stories in a bigger way. And, and now, you know, the marketplace responded. People were, were looking for this. People could sense the power of a story. And um, I'm just very fortunate to be the, one of the people to teach it. I'm so thankful that you, that you do, because in honest, in all honesty, I've, I've been a storyteller all my life. And I know when I, I know that it's not about knowing all of the ingredients of a product that's going to sell it. And I know that people can buy that product from any one person, but I, they, if they're going to buy from me, they need the story of me and why they're buying from me. But I didn't necessarily know how to coach that to others. Like you said, I couldn't believe others didn't know how to own their story and tell their story. I mean, I literally, I remember my first event where I, I skincare is my business. That's the one that actually makes me money. The rest of these yeah. things are fun. And, um, and so in my first event, you know, that I, that I spoke at, I had, I had no idea what our ingredients were. I just knew what they had done for me and how they had changed my skin. And as I shared with this room full of women, I had one woman at the end that was a nurse that she said, what, what's the ingredient in it that has just really transformed your skin? You know, what, what has changed your skin? What's in it? And I said, I don't know, magically. <laughs> because, yeah. like, but, you know, and so I've, I've always told my team, it's not, it's not how much you know, it's how you make people feel. It's you owning your truth and your story. So this will, your book, Stories That Stick, will hands down be um, gifted to people on my team because you really can take a person that doesn't know necessarily what their story is. You know, I have people that I encounter daily that say, I don't have a story. I don't know what you're talking about. But you, you really walk people through that in this book of showing them, here's where you start. Here's how you take your story and just kind of peel the layers off yep. like an onion and, and craft this story that impacts people and, and makes them feel a certain way. So my specialty on this podcast and just in my brand as a whole is purposeful business. And I think people get, they hear all the time, like, find your why, you know, there's the whole like Simon Sinek video of your why and how you develop a why and you craft a why. But I think people get overwhelmed with that. Yeah. This episode brought to you by Brandy Voth Beauty. Have you tried the number one skincare brand in all of North America? Girl, what are you waiting for? Hop over to the-powerproject.com slash powerful beauty, take a five question skincare consultation and email yourself the results. As a thank you, I'm going to personally send you a gift in the mail. That's the dash powerproject.com slash powerful beauty. You, you do a really great job in the book in, in one of your chapters about the purpose yeah. story. Can you walk us through and just give without giving away too much, just give some tangible steps to crafting. A purpose yeah, story. I think, you know, and what you're saying here is, is so important in that people do, they get overwhelmed and they think that they think that it, it it's bigger than it actually is. So I think the key, the biggest thing that I would recommend um, to, to anyone, to, to the people who are listening here to your team, Brandy is when you're thinking about your why, when you're thinking about your purpose, it sounds like such a big thing, but what you need to do instead, don't be thinking about how big it is. Go small. And this isn't, um, there's a lot of great stuff in the book. I don't think this is, I don't think this particular tip is in the book. So you're going to want to get the, get the other ones, but they, choose one moment. And, and, and the other thing to remember is we all have, like, I have that moment when I was in fifth grade telling the story, but I have, I have, I have many moments along my journey that, that are standout moments that are, that are stories in and of themselves that are add up to where I am at today. My objective when I'm trying to communicate my why or my purpose isn't to tell all of them at once, but to choose one and go deeper on it. When I was at that storytelling festival, when I won that competition, these storytellers chose one very small 
moment in their lives. So, so that would be, that would be one of the, the most important things I would say about your purpose story, about your, or when you're thinking about your why story is, is to choose one moment that was like really stand out. And it could have happened over the course of five minutes. Um, but then of course, later in the book, we talk about crafting the story. It's all about how you, you craft that. So instead of feeling the pressure of trying to, to go really big, go small, find one moment and, and go deep on that story. I think that's such a good piece of advice because I, you know, your purpose develops over time as, as you and I both know in business and, and as we grow and we evolve as human beings, I think so many people start out with a business and they're, they're trying to be purposeful entrepreneurs and they start out and they keep hearing this, find your purpose. And they're like, I, I don't know that I want to like, feed all the hungry children in the world or save all the puppies. And so they, like you said, they get overwhelmed with trying to make it so big and so large. And if they can just find that one moment that is, is the truest, most impactful to them, then it will, it will naturally evolve throughout the years. So, um, I, I really do think that is a key, key factor to crafting your story and finding your story. My second question about the book is, what would you tell someone that says, I don't even know what my story is or how to find my story? Yeah, I think that, and I think that is the, I think that's the biggest challenge, right? Is we, we think we don't have, we think we don't have stories um, because there, yes, there are, there are some people who have had huge moments, right? Maybe they're big tragedies or huge successes that jump out as really big stories. But for many of us, um, our lives have just been our lives, right? And so our stories don't sound like stories to us. They just sound like our, our life. And so to that, I would say, again, to think about going small, like think about one moment in your life when you felt a certain way or when a particular, um, where somebody said something that made you go, huh, that's interesting. Or where you, you witness something And these moments, I think the first step really is to recognize that these moments are happening all the time, right? Like I, like even the, the incident yesterday with my family getting ready for school, like they were just getting this, something that happens every day, but it was in my reflection and looking back on that day that I realized there was a story, there was a story there. So I think I want to take, I would just say, take the pressure, take the pressure off yourself. It doesn't have to be big. It doesn't have to be, you know, you mentioned that you're in, in skincare. It doesn't have to be that you had horrible skin growing up your entire life. And now your whole life is transformed because your skin is clear. Maybe you had pretty good skin, you know, maybe, maybe your skin was pretty good, but maybe now yeah, I'm thinking about myself. Maybe now you're in your, your <laughs> late thirties and you're looking in the mirror and you're like, wow, that skin does not look the same as the skin five years ago. And, and you start <laughs> to feel just slightly less confident. And maybe you choose one, gosh, I can't even think about it, just me this morning, right? I was getting ready. I had gotten out of the shower. I was washing my face or I'd washed my face. I was looking in the mirror and I could just see that it just, uh, do you ever have that moment where you look in the mirror and you just kind of like touch your skin a little bit and you're like, wow, that looks <laughs> That looks redder there. And that looks, and then this morning I actually put on three different kinds of foundations. You know, I put on the one that was like the primer that had the whatever in it. And then I put on a, I was like, oh, that's not enough coverage. So then I put on more coverage, but then it just looked, I'm like, that's not appropriate to go outside. Like I'm, I look like I'm going in for a photo shoot. That looks ridiculous. And then, so I tried to put on this like sheer shimmery stuff. And I looked in the mirror and I'm like, what, what, what is happening here? So see, even right there, that's something that happened this morning that could be a part of a skincare story um, that isn't revolutionary. It's just a small moment that happened this morning. That's so good. It, and it's so tangible. Like this is everyday life and we're living stories every day and that every single person has a story unfolding. It's just what we do with it that um, is going to make the difference. And so 
my, one of my favorite stories that I heard you tell this one in person. I love, 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 and I'm not going to spoil this for any readers, but I love the eight and Bob <laughs> yeah. story that you open this book with. Like that was the most brilliant <laughs> salesperson you have ever I know I know I still (laughs) I still can't believe and my husband was just talking about it so my husband's in the story and we were just talking about it with somebody and he said he's like and the way that you read it in the book is exactly how it happened like it was exactly (laughs) that is exactly how it happened um and I really I mean I need to go back to I need to go back to Slovenia, which is where the story happened, and thank that guy (laughs) because I really feel like it's so funny because I think it's that story about story selling that then sells this whole book. I am so grateful for that guy. And then, of course, again, but here's the thing. It's like, sure, we we have random things happen to us all the time in our life, but as that story was happening, I was thinking to myself, this is a story. So I started listening to it differently. You know, like I was, I was becoming like, um, I was in the moment I was witnessing it almost like, almost like out of out of body experience, just watching it in that way so that I could retell it later. (laughs) Oh, I love it. So you guys are going to have to go get stories that stick to read that because it's beautiful. It's a beautiful display of like straight up capturing the male psyche and <laughs> what it well, is and that's, what it is well and it, it's so funny because I've had I've had people now like several people say independently oh I you know I read that first because it's the intro it's the intro um I read that story and now and then I had to read it out loud to my husband like I've had many wives say that which is great I think how great are you doing are you turning this book into an audible yeah, yep I'll be recording that we don't have the date scheduled but it will be out on audible and I get to record it I'm excited about that that's awesome when is the book um going to be available for so purchase? the book is officially released September 24th which I'm like counting down the days for but the good news is right now the book is is available uh, for pre-order online. So you can get it at Amazon. You can get it at Barnes and Noble. And I, it's so interesting because I was never one to like pre-order a book. Like I buy books at, um, you know, like I I buy books once they're out or I buy them at the airport or whatever, but it's interesting this whole book process, how important pre-orders are uh, because it shows the booksellers that, you know, it kind of gives them a flavor for how, that this book is, is one that people are, are going to read. So, um, so pre-orders are important, Brandy. Okay. Well, we will absolutely push <laughs> the pre-order then for, for everyone listening today. Uh, before we hop off here, because I totally appreciate all of the information that you've shared with us, but if you were at a cocktail party or in an elevator and you had three to five minutes to share your favorite cocktail party story what is it and share it with us oh my gosh favorite cocktail party story like any like just some story you would share with someone that you think is a great story they should know <sighs> that's so I I don't I don't have like the answer well I will say I will say this if you're like at a cocktail party and you know that there's like someone there that you want to talk to or you, you know, it's like important, like let's say it's a networking event and you have this one chance to talk to them and make a great impression. It's important to have like a story ready, like right then and there. Um, so for, for example, I, well, I had this, okay, so can I, can I go a different direction with this? I, Absolutely. I had this instant happen um, recently where I was, we were walking home from dropping the kids off at school and uh, we were, so we were on the, you know, on the sidewalk, New York city, and this guy passes us and people are always passing you. But my husband pointed out that it was Donnie Deutsch and um, who, you know, television, radio shows, like he's, he's a, he's a, famous, well-known guy. Well, it turns out Donnie Deutsch was one of the people that really was influential without him knowing it. I listened to his recording on like a CD or a podcast now is, is what it would be. And he was talking to the person about how to follow your passion. And Donnie Deutsch had said, 
um, well, think back to the thing that you really enjoyed doing as a kid. So I heard this on this podcast several years ago, and that's when I realized, like, hey, I always really liked telling stories. Maybe, maybe I should, maybe I should go deeper on that. So this thing had happened. So we're on the street. Donnie Deutsch walks by, and you can't just run up to somebody and like ask to take a selfie with them or what. That's just like not something that you do in New York City, right? Like you're supposed <laughs> to just play it cool. But so I did chase him down on the street um, <laughs> because I had a story to tell him. And so I said, hey, are you – I called out Donnie, and he turned around, and I'm like, Donnie, hey, sorry to bother you on the street, but I have to tell you, you changed my life. And then I told him the story. And, and then we took a selfie, and he was like, oh, you know, thank you. This made my day. Thank you so much for sharing it with me. Um, but I had this, like – I took the opportunity – I shared a story with him and we made a real connection in that moment. Now, is Donnie going to call me? No, I didn't give him my phone number or anything. But I think that's the key is like <laughs> have these stories, have stories ready because when you meet the people that you really want to meet or that have really made an impact on your life, um, don't be afraid to tell them that story. I think that's great. And I can guarantee you that if we are ever in a cocktail party, I bet that you have fantastic stories that you are sharing. Do you just work the room like a straight up like story? Well, telling? no, you know what? The reality is like, I'm one of those extroverted introverts, like cocktail parties make me really nervous. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? It's so funny that we see so many people that speak every day and share stories with the world. And then they are most of the time. I know. Like I'd rather be up in my room in many cases. So, <laughs> Okay, well, one last question, and that is, who was the main storyteller in your life that influenced you? Or can you think of one great storyteller of all time that just you really were intrigued oh, with? Oh, absolutely. No, my favorite storyteller um, and the person that really influenced me the most in the art of storytelling and the craft of storytelling and um, became a mentor and a dear friend um, is Donald Davis. So he he's a traditional storyteller. He can take um, any menial moment and turn it into a masterpiece. He can, I mean, I, so I would strongly encourage if you ever get a chance to go to the National Storytelling Festival in Jonesboro, Tennessee, um, it's the first weekend in October and it's magical, but you can also find Donald's work. I think he's on iTunes. Even you can listen to his stories there, but he is, um, above and beyond by far hands down. There is no one who tells a story like he does. And I get emotional every time I think about it. He is actually, uh, he married my husband and I, he was our, he was our officiant, at our wedding, um, my son is named after him. His middle name is Davis. So I cannot, uh, I cannot speak more highly or more often of Donald Davis. So go check him out. That is yeah. awesome. I am definitely going to check him out and look him up. And speaking of looking people up, where can everyone find you if they want to follow all of the wonderful stories that you craft on a yeah. daily basis? Yeah, well, I'm always, uh, I'm always on Instagram. So my Instagram handle is Kendra Hall. That's Kendra with an I. So it's K-I-N-D-R-A-H-A-L-L. -L. I'm also on Facebook. I think it's slash Kendra Hall fan. Um, and also if you go to my website, which is KendraHall.com, there's an opportunity there to sign up for my weekly um, newsletter, which are actually videos that are all about storytelling. So I send out weekly videos about storytelling but yeah, those are the places. And of course, um, now on Amazon and Barnes and Noble with uh, stories that stick. Awesome. Well, I will be sure and add all of that in the show notes so that people can hang out with you. And once again, I appreciate you taking the time out today to chat with us. It's been so fun and I'm absolutely loving the book. I look forward to hearing more stories from you. Over Yay. Time. Thank you so much, Brandy. It was a pleasure. Thanks. You have a you great too. day. Bye now. Oh my gosh, you guys, isn't she just a delightful ray of sunshine wrapped with purpose and tied up in a pretty little business bow? 
She's one of those just bubbly butterflies that I want to listen to everything she has to say. I hang on her every word, but she has some major tangible takeaways to help us in life, in business, in nonprofit, in ministry. You can apply what Kendra taught us today to any area that you are in. If you like what you heard today, do us a favor, go write a review, subscribe, share us on all forms of social media, get crazy, tell all your friends about us. And as always, I can't wait to chat with you next week, but until then, go out and live your best purpose-filled lives.